what's up guys hope y'all are having a great day so in the last video we did a fuel consumption test on this overall this uh, setup i built to test fuel economy seemed to work pretty good so now we're going to test it on a different engine so if you guys saw a previous video we did an unboxing and a first start on this engine and i haven't started it since so we're going to go and bolt this behemoth onto the cart connected to the generator with the belt i got a one inch pulley right here to fit on the shaft so we're gonna get that guy mounted on there. I have no idea if the bolt holes are gonna be the same. Probably not, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this unbolted and loosen the belt. And that's it. Once I get this thing kind of thrown on, we're gonna do some running. I do wanna kind of break this thing in a little bit. So I'll probably run it for a bit and then we'll start doing some fuel economy testing just to see how much worse or better it could be. Most people are probably thinking, well, it's bigger. It's gonna use more fuel. Yes, but at the same time, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it uses more fuel or not. It is a way bigger engine, so it probably will, but who knows, we'll actually see what it does. But it also has more power, so maybe it'll generate more power because it has more torque. Look how big this thing is on this little cart. She's a monster, and we still have plenty of space between the mufflers, so that's good. We're probably gonna have to put the exhaust deflector on this thing because it's gonna shoot exhaust all over the heat sinks. Not a big deal. Now I'm gonna see if the bolt holes line up. So the rear bolt holes do not line up at all. The front ones do line up side to side. They're the right width, but the engine is way longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount, mount the front, get it eyeballed, and then we're gonna drill new rear holes for the engine i'm just going to use this to make a little mark and then i got the drill in the bit right there we get this thing locked down it'd be nice to run this actually bolted down because i haven't done that yet and people in the comments are telling me i should do that so i'm going to listen to them all right here's the engine all mocked up i went ahead and marked all the holes so now i'm going to remove the engine drill them and should be ready to bolt it down hopefully i can get this thing to start all right i'm gonna throw the bolts in it Get the belt put on it. All right, it's kind of windy. Is it about to rain? It's definitely raining. All right, guys, so we have a slight issue. The pulley is supposed to be a one inch pulley, and this is a one inch shaft. And I actually measured this with a digital caliper, and it is one inch, exactly. But the pulley doesn't fit quite right. So I think I'm going to try to get a piece of aluminum can and make like a shim, because I want this, I don't want this to be oblong on the shaft and, you know, do that with the belt. So I'm going to make a little shim, then we're going to get this all tightened on, get the belt thrown on, and then we're going to connect this to the battery bank, and we're going to try to make some power with it. All right, so I got this monster can here, so I'm just gonna wrap this around the crankshaft and then get it to about even, and I'm just gonna cut it. Now to create like a little spacer, and then we're gonna slide the pulley on. Actually, I could even do, I'm gonna put the keyway on first. So we're gonna slide the pulley on. And then with the pulley already on, I'm gonna try to wiggle this between the shaft and the pulley. There you go, if you ever gotta make a shim, aluminum cans are great. Oh yeah. A little tricky, but there we go. You can see with the shim on there, look, way less play. So that's awesome. And then all I got to do now is put some Loctite on the scrub screw. So I'm going to do that, get this all tightened up, get the belt thrown on, get the alignment for the belt to that, and we should be good to go. All righty, guys, we got the engine all mounted on there. So looking good. I'm glad I can use this car for, it's kind of cool because I can be able to use this car for any engine I want. And that'll be kind of nice. I can use it for breaking in engines. I can use it for charging my batteries, you know, all kinds of cool stuff like that. So I guess now also I, there's an exhaust spout that I need to put because the exhaust is blowing right on the rectifiers and right on this wire. So that might be an issue. So I'm going to go see if I can't find that. And then I think I'm going to hook this up and try to use it and see if I can get it to make some power. This thing is an absolute monster of an engine compared to the other one. It's easily twice the weight, twice the horsepower, maybe even three times the horsepower because I believe the other one's a three horse. This one's a 10. So super awesome also something to note the only pulley i could find at tractor supply was a 3.5 inch pulley so this might be able to run at a slightly lower rpm while giving us the same output so remember guys this is because this is a permanent magnet generator setup with rectifiers the output the current we're going to get is very dependent on the speed of this so and also the state of charge of the batteries because the higher the state of charge of the batteries the higher the voltage needs to be in order for it to push current into the battery so just kind of something to keep in mind. She's all mounted up, very solid. Here, I'll show you guys me starting it. Just give it a little bit of throttle. Turn the compression release on and you pull it with both hands. Alrighty, so we're about to do a test run on this setup. We have the battery bank hooked up at 53.2 volts. I also went ahead and scooped this non-contact tachometer. So we're gonna put a piece of reflective tape on the hub motor as well as on the engine pulley. That way we can measure RPM. And I guess my plan is I'm gonna get it up to about a thousand watts. Just let it run for a bit. And then we're gonna check RPM on both of those just so we can start documenting it and then 
you know, have it for future notes and all that good stuff. I haven't been doing that in the past, but I really want to start doing that. And then it'll be easier to compare fuel economy between like, say 500 RPM at the hub versus 750. You know, there might be an efficiency area where we get more watt hours per gallon running at a certain RPM. So that'd be kind of cool to test that and be able to actually, you know, see what it's actually doing. So anyways, I'm gonna get that on there, go ahead and do that and then let it run and see what it does. So it's actually kind of loud too. I feel really bad for my neighbors. Definitely gonna have to be careful about how I run this so I don't make anyone mad, but oh well. It did come with an exhaust deflector, but I cannot find it, but I want to deflect the exhaust this way away from the wires. So if I can't find it, I'm just gonna build my own. But other than that, this thing is good to go. And like I said, I'm really happy to have this thing mounted. It's actually able to somewhat start now. I still want to get the electric start. Somebody on my previous video did post the links to the electric start kit for this. So depending on how much I actually plan on using this, I may look into it, but I do want to use this engine on a mini bike, a go-kart and a bunch of other things as well. Definitely want to get some use out of it just because I think it's awesome. Anyways, that's it for now. I guess next we're going to hook it up and start doing some fuel economy testing. I am going to hook it up as it is with the gas tanks or with the fuel tank still on it so I can break the engine in because this engine has almost no runtime. So I think I want to run it as is for a bit, break the engine in a little bit, do an oil change. And then we're going to do the fuel economy test where I hook up the test tube with the fuel line and we do the same exact measurements we did on the other diesel engine. So, well, alrighty guys, that's going to do it for this video. I'm just now finishing up the edit and I just wanted to end the video off by saying thank you guys so much. If you made it to this far in the video, you are the real MVPs here, but that's going to be it. Let me know what else y'all want me to do with this engine. What else you guys want to see? Keep giving me good ideas for content and I will do my best to produce those ideas. And I just really enjoy making videos for you guys. I'm loving that the channel's doing as good as it is. And I'm very thankful that y'all are sticking around and actually watching it and checking it out. So that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.